Hey guys, Paradox Gaming here, back with a shitty mic. I don't really like making videos on this computer because of how shit the mic quality is, so I'm going to try and avoid it, but I, I want to make a video tonight. Um, this is a Python video, I might make it, I probably won't make another one actually because I don't want to really make videos on this computer. And uh, yeah, my actual headset mic's broken at my other end, but it still has a better camera mic, so um, yeah. Okay, today we're going to be making the Fibonacci sequence, which um, is a sequence known by many, so if you don't know it, you can go and Google it, because I don't need to explain it, because I'm pretty sure anyone who watches this video probably probably knows it, okay? If you don't know it, you probably should. If, if, you know, if, you, if you're above the age of about 14, you should definitely know it. Okay, so um, import. Okay, the first thing we want to do is we want to have a time delay, so it prints out each number in the sequence. We want to have it, so it imports time. Later, I will be showing you a different sequence, which is called the stern brokaw sequence. Now, you can Google that, but I will explain that, because it's almost unheard of. Um, I, yeah, it took me a while. This one took me about 10 minutes to figure out how to make it. It took me five minutes to figure out. That one took me an hour to figure out how to make it in Python. That is a lot more complex, and it's my probably my best program, my most impressive program, because of how I've got it. It's, it's actually very only a few lines, but it's my most impressive, in my opinion. Import time. Okay, so we want a time delay. Now we want to do the first two numbers in the sequence, which is 1 and 1, of course. x equals 1, y equals one. Now don't tell me the is the first number because zero is not the first number because if you start the sequence, you start with one number and that's a one. One add nothing because there is nothing to add to it. it just goes to one. and then you carry on those numbers. If you start at zero, which is the first number, you have zero to add to it. so, you have nothing to add, so you just go to the next one with zero. Oh, but these two equals zero. And, uh, so you can't start with zero, you start with one. That's how you start it off. You can't go from zero to one just like that. The first number is the number on its own, which is one. Okay, now we've got that out of the way. Okay, so first we've got to print um, x. Of course, then we've got a y. Oh, yeah, we want a time dot sleep. Okay, we're going to make these print outside of the loop we're going to make. Let's make it 0.5. And then print just for we could do print x again, but just for sake, you know, we're gonna do that. Okay, now we want a while true function because we want this to play forever. Okay, so um, there is a really impressive way you might be able to make it so it prints out a certain digit at that stage, and that is, I think I might do that, I'm not sure, but yeah, we'll do this for now. Okay, so we want we want it to do this, we want okay, time dot sleep is the first thing. 0.5 and then we want number so the next number in the sequence x plus y because you total the last two and then we need to first not reassign x because the last two variables that we used need to be reassigned so they're now the, the a variable ahead so the number so we want we want um x equals number y equals x. Now if you've already noticed there's a problem with putting them in this order because now when I do the 2 which will be number x will equal 2 but then y will also equal 2 which will make it double and then I'll go around again and it'll be 2 plus 2 which will be 4 so x will equal 4 and then y will equal 4 which will make it double rather than do the actual sequence because what we're doing here is we need to reassign y and x before we reassign um, x to number so we need to put this before, so you can make it so y equals x before that's reassigned. Otherwise, your program is completely messed up. It's not messed up, you just you get a logic error because it doesn't print out what you want it to print out. So now when you've saved it to your directory, whenever you want to save it, um, it should print quite normally. I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll minimise it for a second. I'll run for you guys, run. <laughs> you can see the recording about run a little. I should minimise that. Okay, what are you doing? There we go. Go! I think it's because I... What are you doing? Why have you just stopped? Um... Oh yeah, I haven't made a print. <laughs> what am I doing? Okay, sorry about that. Okay. Print... Um, number. And then we'll run it. And it should work. I'll be back in a second. And there it is guys, the Fibonacci sequence. Now you can change the speed how you like, 
But now I'm going to show you a more complex sequence, which is much harder to program. But it took me a while, and I figured it out. I could, I tried it a year ago and gave up, but this year I did it. I did it. I did it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm going to get huge quickly, but this sequence does not. Now, I'm going to explain to you this next sequence. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, I'm back, and this time we're going to be doing <coughs> the Stern Brocott sequence. Now it's named after the guy who invented it, Stern Brocott. Well, if I think it is. I haven't looked that up because a lot of mathematical equations were named after other mathematicians that those mathematicians liked. For example, Avogadro's constant was not invented or discovered by Avogadro. It was actually a different mathematician. Or um, Jean Venn did not create the Venn diagram. It was someone else. But I don't remember those people because they're not the famous ones, are they? That's the problem. Import. Okay. So you want to import time on this one as well because we wanted to print each number in the sequence. Now this one, I didn't do it last year this way, but I figured out this year. You need a, you need a list. You need a list. So you want the list of every single number in the sequence. You want it to be put into this list. So the list starts out similar to the Fibonacci sequence. Stern Brocott stands. Okay, I'm going to do Stern underscore Brocott because I like doing lists like this. And then I do that. My first two numbers because they're numbers we don't need to do them in strings we can just print them out okay now um what was i going to say okay the standard se sequence looks like this basically you have the first two numbers and then what you do is you take the last two numbers you're using and you total them similar but then you take the, the last number of those two and you put it on the end but then you use these one sec Hey guys, I'm back. Sorry, just had my tea there. I was explaining it. Okay, so basically, in the Stern Brocott sequence, you have the first two numbers, you add them together to make the next number, and then you take the last number of those first two and plot on the end. So now we're going to be on these two numbers. We only move one step forward. So you get rid of the back number and, goes, and we still use the uh, last number we did in the last one as the first number. So we add these two together, we get three. And then we put a two on the end. And then we use these two numbers, and as you can tell, um, we get a three, and we get a one. And then we'll be on these, and as you can see, the sequence is going on way quicker than we are producing it. The point we are is half the length of the point uh, where the sequence ends so far. <clears throat> and that's what I just figured out when I finally finished the program. It's actually because yeah, it relates to halving the length of your list to get to this number and add them together. And that's how it works. The cool thing about this sequence is that when you put a fraction between every single number, it will make a, a unique, uh, the most simplified fraction you can ever get in its, in its yeah, simple form. And it has to be unique. So 1 out of 1, okay, that's the first fraction. You will not see 2 out of 2. That's the simplest form and it only appears once in the entire sequence. 1 out of 2. You won't see a 2 out of 4. You won't see a, um, a 3 out of 6. You won't see a, a, a half out of 1 because you don't actually get decimals in this. You will never see a half appear again in any other form. They're, they're not repeating and that's a really efficient way to list every fraction. So now we're going to do this, okay? We're going to make the Stern Brocott sequence. So the first thing we want to do is we want to print out. Um, we want to print out just that, you know, Mm, Stern Brocott, I'll just copy this. Stern Brocott 0, and then time.sleep. I want to do like, let's do 0. 0.5 for this. Let's copy this again. Are you serious? Come on. There you go. Um, Stern Brocott 1. We don't want actually want that one there because it's going to be inside the while loop that we make now. So while true. Okay, this is the complex bit which took me a while. Okay. So the first thing you need is you need a value which equals half um half the sequence. So we need m. So our myth equals the length of Stern underscore Brocott bracket minus one so that's simply just the length so it'll be two now we need 
sorry for a second there, it ended my recording. Now we need the first number. So x equals, and we want, whenever we go in the sequence, we the first number's got to be the one that we're first using, and that's going to be half the half half in the in the halfway point of the actual sequence that we are writing out. So that's the length. What we want to do is we want to do x equals stern underscore brocot uh, square bracket n divided by two. Sorry, did that wrong. Okay, and then it will just divide it by two. And the next number we used to add. Well, actually, yeah, this will be the first one. That one will just be the uh, actual, because, you know, when you get the length of something and you subtract one, maybe this should just be the length. Yeah, that's probably, more co that's probably correct. I think that's correct anyway. So you get the length and you get two. X will be the stern broke 2 divided by 2. Now we know that the, the first place is actually index 0. This will be index 1, so it'll be that one. And we want to copy this bit for y and then do a minus one. We could do it on x actually. That means it will go back to zero and it will be the first one in the sequence. It will be the one just before the halfway point, which is what we're using. So now what we've got to do is we've got to do the list. Stern underscore brocot dot append. Um, yeah, stern underscore brocot dot append Oh yeah, yeah, you've got to do the new number, haven't you? Number equals x plus y. And then you add the number to the list. So it'll be at the end of the list. And that'll be a 2. And then you've got to make it so that it makes... Oh yeah, it'll just repeat it, won't it? So you've got to make it print. Yeah, you've got to add again the, number, the last number we were using, which is x because that's the one just ahead of y and you add that onto the list as well after this number so this will this will add on one again and we want to make it add on x and then to finish it off we do stu we just do print stern uh, underscore brocot index we do the length of it this is the best way to do it to do this way length stern underscore underscore brocot minus one and then we copy this and we just do the minus two well minus two should come first actually because then it's doing the second to last in the sequence so that will be number by this point and that will be x and then it will go around so yeah, you've got to save it, and um, then it should start again. It should be dot end, and when it goes to the end of it, which will be four numbers now, it'll be four. It'll be two and one. It'll go back to n equals length, which will be four. X will equal stern, and then it will go to the index of four divided by two, which is two, and two will be this number. Then we also take that same number and we just subtract one, which will be this one. So then you will add those two together and get three. It will add three and then add x again, which was two, and that's correct. It works. So I'm just going to save it and come back with the actual program. Sorry, I, I just wanted to save it. Um, I had to put the time dot sleep on the end. I haven't run it yet. I just realized, you know, it's best to not make it go so really quickly. Let's see if it works then, shall we? Invalid syntax, where? Where? Have I spelt something wrong? No? Mm, time to sleep, is it this? Do you not like that? Okay, it's not that. Dot append x. x has been defined. n has been defined. What's the syntax error? Give me a second, guys. Ah, guys, I remember this. This was the thing I just, um, this is the thing I did a while back um, when I first figured this out. It wasn't actually a while back, it was today. Um, it was actually because when you divide an integer by an integer, it usually gives you a decimal. And indexes can't be decimals, so what you should do is you should do an int 
inside the square brackets. Now I'm pretty sure that is the error because it doesn't look like it's anything else in there. Otherwise it would say. Now if I do it. Okay, it literally just won't. Okay, this is odd. Be right back in a moment. Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. Like, why did I put the... Oh. That was the problem, guys, the entire time. The minus one was outside of the square brackets. I'm not subtracting one from a stern broke Are you serious? Oh my god. Is it, is it this? Is it, is it that? Is it... It, it has to be that, right? No, it's not. What am I missing? Seriously, guys, what am I missing now? I swear. And oh, I don't know what. Just what thing? That's correct. I'll try a different way. Hope that this works. Ready? We'll do T equals N divided by 2. And that'll be an int. This will make the thing simpler, so we can just put T inside here. And we don't need to int it, because it's already been inted. It's already been turned into an integer. Which means we will only need to subtract 1 from T here. Let's see if it works now. I'm going to have to find this. Give me a moment. That just that was about that was about three seconds of my life and I've just realised I've just realised it. I'm such a twat. That's it the whole time, isn't it? Oh, that's it, isn't it? Yeah, that was it. Is it going right? One, two, one, three, two, three, one, four. Yeah, it looks right to me. There you go. But we want to make it seem a bit more ni uh, nicer than that, so we're going to put the time little sleep between the two prints. So it's better. Ah, that no, looks better. Well, actually, no, it's still going to do another. It's going to do the other one pretty much instantly as soon as you, yeah. So you might as well put it here as well. And now when we F5 to run it, it will look beautiful. Yeah. And it's using halfway. Uh, that took me way too long, actually, just to, just to remove that little bit. But there you go. It's done. The T-step in the middle is not needed, by the way. So thank you for watching this video on two different sequences. Um, this took me a while to figure out. It does take a while. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.